she needs so that she can become a licensed appraiser. And uh, in you know to recognize what she has put in, I, I would propose that her wage be increased. And I've listed there the category that she would fall under. And I've also computed uh, the number of hours and the wage increase and retirement benefits to be about $4,600. Increase on your on your budget would be the forty six words. That would be her if I if we um, give her the increases that I propose. That's what I am computing. It would be that's including benefits. That is including and her benefits. I'm not sure how I, I tried to figure retirement fight it based on what we're seeing here. That would like to add about a thousand. I don't know that her benefits would change based on wage increase. She already on the mission. Yes. And it should just be have her the time. Well, everybody's calling for six percent. Okay, so now we're good. The big ask. there, did you? I didn't. Um, I know you've heard from planning and zoning and, and the recorder. We all know that the county is growing. I've tried to, to put some numbers here together for you so you can see what has occurred over the past um, 35 years. And when I started part-time, there was a part-time assessor and a part-time appraiser and three other part-time people. Now we're up to uh, four full-time, and one of those covers strictly motor vehicle. Uh, I remember last year I asked for some part-time to help out in the motor vehicle, actually, especially, but um, that was um, that was not that did not happen last year. Um, COVID has actually kind of helped in, in this regard since we are practicing the social distancing. We can only serve one person at a time in the motor vehicle. And so the lines have been longer than we've ever had. But more and bitches have switched to the online, which has helped. And we, we now close during the lunch hour for motor vehicle because I simply cannot expend an assessor hour to go out there and cover that. And in fact, the other morning, I have two employees off. Um, my appraiser was hunting, and, and one was sick. And uh, when my uh, voicemail came at about 6:30, I thought my first thought was, "Oh, I hope that Lord Vieta wasn't sick. She hardly ever is. But if she is, I honestly was going to go put a sign on the door and say, "I'm sorry, we are close. I can't cover it." And uh, so anyway, she is strictly, um, st 
strictly out there in motor vehicle. And um, you can see that the workload over the past year has increased. Second page, or the back of the first page, I think, on yours. Brenda mentioned all of the subdivisions that are coming online. I actually put it, put the numbers to it so you can have it visually there in front of you. Not all of those will be recorded this year, but every single one of those are on the planning and zoning um, radar, and uh, they're working on concept at least. We, we simply need another appraiser um, to get the job done that we're required to do. Going out to each home once every five years, that, that's what puts us at 800 per year. And that doesn't include the commercials that also need to be done. And all of the new homes that are coming online and, and everything, I mean, we have to sketch them, we have to measure them when we go out to check the sketch to make sure it didn't change. Site visits to each one of the new homes. You can see the building permits, how they increased. You see the dip that we had when everything kind of crashed and burned and from 9 and 10 and 11. And then you can see we've, we've recovered. And it's just uh, year to date. We'll, we'll surely surpass the 266 that we had in, in 2019. But that, along with everything else that uh, our office is in charge of, we have to keep up on all the sales, all the land segregations, the new subdivisions that come from the recorder's office. A new thing that has been instituted by the State Tax Commission that I've been doing for the past 10 years is uh, the primary residential exemption, making people sign saying that they absolutely are, is their primary residence so that they can get that 45% exemption. That is now being mandated by the state. Um, over the last few years, as I've lost different employees, um, that's one of the things that I thought, if I, if I need to cut something, that's going to be cut. That would be one of the first things. But now, we can't cut that. That is, that is mandated now. Uh, keeping up with the green belt, um, it's surprising how much land changes hands that is Greenbelt property. We've had big tracts of land sell these past few years. <coughs> Mike Schultz is buying up all of Croydon. Um, we've got you know, Tidy Ranches for sale now. We have some activity in hard scrabble up towards East Canyon. Um, Peter Hicks that sold to Wasatch Peaks. He bought Floyd Hatch's piece up there in East Canyon and now he's turned around and sold that just in the last month or two. And um, all of that, we have to keep up with them on Greenbelt, make, green make sure they're in compliance. And you know, I fought so hard for um, the, it's important that we have the values where they are on Greenbelt so that when they eventually are developed, like that piece I, I'm keeping my eye on in Mountain Green, that we can get a realistic rollback tax out of that. And so that is a, a big process as far as Greenville. Personal property taxation, um, I Wait, honestly think... Go, can I ask a question sure. about all that on Greenville? I don't understand that. Uh, they paid the difference between what they paid on Greenville and what they would have paid had they not been in Greenville for five years back. And most of the people are pretty educated, but every once in a while we get someone that for whatever reason, uh, it's a big surprise. And, and we are doing uh, quite a bit of auditing this, just uh, within the last four months. Uh, we had, oh, I can't remember, a 60-acre parcel in Mountain Green come out. Uh, Non-compliance, we got $37,000 rollback on, on just that one piece. And so we are being, I'm, I'm beefing up on the audits and uh, They've got to complete questionnaires. They've got to submit their IRS papers on their farm exemption. They've got to have signed lease affidavits through their uh, using it for new site inspections. And so uh, we we work with uh, a lot of the um, ranchers that are true ranchers. Um, if I know that 
Mike Morgan or Jeff Jones have a piece, I know that it's being done correctly. Um, but we check, we check them out. How often do they have to? You said you do audits. That's, I assume, in order to make sure that things are accurate. Yes, we can do those audits anytime we want. When they sign there, up. There's no automatic where they have to renew their no, application. There is not. That's up to our office. And usually it's because some neighbor tells on, tells on them. <laughs> uh, usually it might be because somebody um, gets kicked off of a piece. And, you know, there's a fine line there. Ranchers don't want to tick off the people that they can go on their land. So there, there's a fine line there, and we do our best to make sure that everything's in compliance. So on the rollback, help me understand the free number base in, uh, in revenue. That doesn't go against our, our that's just <coughs> like our garbage, right? It's right. It's right. It's it's right. It's it's the same as tax dollars. But. So on Wasatch Peaks, when does that rollback go into effect? I imagine we'll see some of it come out this next year. As of January 1st in 2020, we determined that there you know, wasn't any progress. But I talked with Ed Schultz the other day, and we're going to get together before the end of the year and figure out what our first take is going to be on that. And um, we just have to see how that goes. Probably not a lot until they start developing the residential lots or Yes, even though they put in that road, if um, Mike Morgan's allowed to, you know, have his animals run across, it, it's kind of hard for me to say, well, we need to take out that land where your road is, because I have farmers and ranchers that have roads all over, and you just can't, you can't. But there are some places up there, I know this, uh, when I was looking through planning and zoning records where they're asking for a lay-down yard for um, putting some different stuff. And you can see it kind of up there behind Whittier's barn and I don't know how many acres that is, but I look at that, but honestly it's going to be nice. Yeah, it's not going to be but that yeah. right there, but actually how the source might be on the side of the is actually something that raises or comes out to me. It's an off-property housing. Inviting the assessor along who is going to be a crazy name. Yeah, I actually offered it. Hey, I, I, I offered it this morning. They're going to take another group up. We, I, I pulled a rate of neighbor in with his razor to accommodate everyone. Or other. Yeah, I, I've been interested the two times that I'm aware of that county officials have been asked to go that uh, our office has not been invited, and I don't know if that's on purpose or not, but we need to be involved. He's, he, meant, he said to reach out if, if anyone else wanted to go, so I'll, I'll let you know that you want to go, but you're welcome to reach out to me too. So, anyway, um, let's see. There Does your last, does your last page have the, there you are. That's the big ask. 105,000. Did my best to compute numbers. Um, I I noticed that you asked Lance yesterday. You know, what what are your numbers? And I'm kind of limited to what I can provide. I try to get information, and this is the best that um, that I can come up with. So you're asking for appraiser one and appraiser two? No, I took um, the high end on both of them and said this is the range one appraiser. But I'm using those two classifications because I don't I don't know if I'm allowed to hire where I'm going to have somebody come in, how many years of experience they're going to have. Obviously if I if I need to start from scratch, uh, I'm hoping I don't. But uh, it's surprising there's a lot of people that I don't know, maybe I'll be able to learn some away from Beaver County. <laughs> they, 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 they decide, you know, that Morgan isn't that far to, to drive and to my own They can't get the so good luck. Um, no. Is there, sorry. Um, in terms of bringing someone in, I mean, if you bring someone in at the max 
next rain, they're going to be stuck there. They'll be redlining, being unable to receive an increase for the rest of their time there. So. The, does your show of praise and tree underneath that I haven't highlighted? It does. I, I, that's where my appraiser is now. He has almost 20 years of experience. Mm -hmm. So unless I get someone like that, I, I think they will have their so when you go from one to two to three, do you have a clear career progression plan? You know what, we used to, but since the county did away with the salary study that was done in 17, there's not, it's it's disappointing. So how do you decide when somebody should go from one to two or two to three? I have job descriptions mm -hmm. that list the different duties that they do. Just try and fit them in, but before we had the job description and the mid, uh, min, mid, and max range, and then we had 10 steps over, what was that, Stacey, 18 years, I think? It was 20 years, that was you actually went through each of the steps. And, and I can show my employee, here's where you are, and this is where you're going to be, and, and if you do this, you move to this tier, if you start here, we do not have that anymore. And um, it's unfortunate. <coughs> If, if I can be assured that those numbers, um, that range, I, I only pulled, I, I got the whole listing of every job in the county. I only highlighted those there. Um, if, if you're right, I could, I could do that. Maybe that's something, that's something to do. Here, the, the wake is on here. I just, that's what I was texting. I just got the range for the county here. I mean, these mm -hmm. wages. This is what the county thinks is kind of a little bit. So, if you're competitive in wages, I'm probably more than competitive considering you're more. Um, have you, you've heard of tech yet, for sure. I wish you could repeat yes. We used to rely on them. Um, we told other fourth class counties and fifth class at the time. Then we also used Weaver Davis on the summit and threw those in there because they are our competitive markets. Yeah. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. But I suspect the hesitancy to prepare a schedule you could say that somebody was a pattern of going through the schedule or whatever you could call it human resources context. Um, would be that you could say that they're going to be there, but then you come to this meeting and you're not sure whether the council will approve the budget to allow them to move up, right? You no, know, we didn't seem to have a problem for 10 years. Uh, it, it worked very well. I, I, I've been here long enough and have seen enough salary studies done prior to the one that we did in-house in 2007 with a few employees and a from the council, and they spent upwards of $30,000 on some of those studies, and when it came back and said, this is what you should be paying the council, the commission, oh, we can't do that, and it gets thrown out, so it's $30,000 wasted. In 2007, we were able to put together a great plan, and it worked for 10 years. And then so that was a so when you talk about 2017, you're referring back to a plan that was put together in 2007, followed for 10 years. For 10 years. And then in 17, everything got thrown out, and I'm not sure where we're at now. I can't, I can't say to my employees, this is, I can say this is where you're at, you're between here and here, and what you can expect over the course of the years. Okay, and then my other question was, when your appraisers receive these certifications that they receive, does that allow them to go out and provide appraisals on a commercial basis? Like, or is it specifically governmental assessment? No, it, it would be on a commercial basis. Um, my prior appraiser, he did he work on the site. So okay. We were not allowed him to do it in our county if they're an appraiser in our county. But um, my current appraiser doesn't choose to do any food work on the side. And you, 
um, prior appraiser was licensed and able to do that. And then we got him all of the certifications and he left us. So um, you need to be a licensed appraiser. I'm a certified res appraiser, but you do have to be licensed in order to hold the office of assessor. So if someone um, took over for me, they would be, they would have three years to be licensed and they would be ousted from office. It is a requirement for the office. But not before you end the election. Not before you end the election. Unless I think is it second or third third, second and first, I believe you do have to, but prior to that, you know, in the in the lower class counties, you do not, but three years after. Not too lower class counties. I know, that's why I <laughs> changed it. So I didn't I didn't press the other folks for it. This is a little bigger ask, so I'm gonna press you a little bit about it. What are your recommendations for the revenue to cover that hundred thousand dollar ask? And I'm gonna start asking everybody that. So. Well our office doesn't bring in recording fees or building fees. We do get paid somewhere between twenty five and thirty thousand for the motor vehicles work that is done. I'll cover all of them. We're not we doing that. But all I can say is, if we're, if we're doing our job and going out and picking up the new group growth on all of the new homes, that's, that's where your revenue is coming in. I can tell you, my appraiser that came from Wasatch County, when he was handed his section of Wasatch County to do, he had homes that had been built for three years that had not been taxed because they had not gotten out to do the work. And that is unacceptable. And I would never let that happen. If, if we let anything go, it'd have to be the uh, reappraisal, and then you'd have the state tax commission sitting here instead of me telling that we weren't in compliance because of that hand. So, so what, to what? make sure I understand that if we don't do truth and taxation and adjust, that new growth is absorbed the following year. I mean, we get it the first year because you go out and get it. But then the following year, that new growth is lumped into our overall value. And when the state tax commission determines our rate, they take that overall value and our budget and determine our rate. So our rate Flexible. generally falls, the rate, because the valuation goes up overall for the whole county, including that, that new growth. That's correct. <laughs> She's the expert on new growth. I know that they, they have some factoring in there for, for the visualization. In five years of when people don't pay their taxes. So, all I'm getting at is for the benefit of the public, we're losing that new growth that does come in every year, in essence, if we don't do anything, if we just let it ride. That new growth becomes a part of our overall valuation, and we lose that additional revenue that the new growth brings in the first year, in subsequent years. Or, if we don't make it. Yeah, sense. or if you don't even get it because yeah. you don't get out there to. Yeah. yeah. Well, going over to make Mike's point, where we're getting at, and this is the conversation we were having yesterday, so I'll kind of bring you up to speed, is when we said we wanted to leave our rate the same, there was a lot of pushback because we're a fiscal year instead of a calendar year, and it's hard for a, a fiscal year entity to determine how to keep the rate the same because the assessor, the new assessed value isn't there. But I was pointing out that this is just math, that we could, we could take the new growth for, through the year and working with you and working with Lance, we would know what came online and what's making up, or we could wait and take that new growth number and figure that into the budget. And that way, you would come closer on keeping that rate the same than in letting it fall back down. And in a growing county like we're in, it's very hard to justify lowering that rate while we're not keeping up with salaries, wages, for current employees, or, or providing services for a growing community, like in your office where you're doubling right, your work. So that's the point we were getting to. I think we can back into the number. We won't come perfect to it, but we can come closer. Keeping in mind, for the camera, that we're losing on the centrally assessed side, commercial personal property loses value every year, so there are some other adjustments made that we could still capture the one section. There, we, we did try and track that. Um, I haven't for the last while. I can show you the spreadsheet that 
shows our best effort at guessing new growth and where it came in and it gets embarrass embarrassingly off. Even because we never know where they're going to be on January 1st at the point of completion. Uh, I mean that, that plays into it because that's what we have to value as of January 1st. Um, you mentioned the centrally assess. Now it used to be that whatever went up and down on centrally assess was counted as new growth. Has that changed now, I think? Yeah, I mean, they they have, something. And, but the overall on central assess, that the counties are losing in the lawsuits on centrally assessed. And so instead of centrally assessed holding its own, it's starting to shrink. And what that does is push that, that tax rate of the overall number. It spread out, gets spread out over the, and, it, and where we're growing mainly residentially instead of business price is getting pushed more and more to the property tax side. And I think that you will see, um, uh, you know, the very last thing on there was that personal property. Um, right now we've got over $52 million in value and $650,000 in taxes. Um, I would not be surprised if over the next five to ten years you see that the property phase right out and it will be the redistributed among all of us. Uh, there's just such a big push back at the land. There were several counties, cities didn't do it because they don't they don't collect that. It's like a county revenue. So UAC was really good about proactively acting during the legislative season and the pushback on that, but it was a bill that came in. You know how they do those? They push them very last minute, the last week, no reason reason anything. So it came closer, but I was proud of the the work we did on stopping it. But I sat in those committee meetings, I've heard the discussions. When people are thinking about personal property, they're thinking about the laptop and your desk computer and your table. And they're, and they're, they're not, not thinking about wholesome so 27 million. Exactly. Yeah, they're not thinking about wholesome equipment. They're not thinking about ski lifts and chair lifts that would go in on both sides of the mountain. They're not thinking about that as personal property. Mm -hmm. When that came out of centrally assessed and went into personal property, to remove that is a big deal. So Summit County was key in working to turn that around because they do a lot of their personal property at the ski resort. So that's one of those reasons that during the legislative session, if you're not paying attention, you can really, really quickly. Mm -hmm. That's my thought on it. But, but even if we came closer, I don't want to go over it. it how's it going the game show? Estimate, come close, but not over. And that's what we'd like to see. So bottom line is, your suggestion is we're going to have to increase revenues to cover the expenses. We're going to have to increase, our, increase budget, our budget stash and mill levy that will cover the cost, but what she brings to the table or their office brings to the table is <coughs> a large portion of our real estate gen tax generating portion of the general fund. Our office should be totally um, funded by assessing and collecting what we do. I mean, I think some of the other offices are a certain percent, you know, a little bit out of Stacey's, a little bit out of the sheriff's, goes to assess and collect the 100% of our office. And even if we, recognizing the difficulty of establishing the assessed value on January 1st of the year for projects and their completion, even if we missed it the first year, at least if we're diligent, we pick it up the second. Correct. If really, what we're looking at is that actual new growth. Number and so if it if it's in if it's completed by December thirty first January first then that's the number and we get back into that. Through the it sounds like she's got the data. We just need to work on her a little bit to get that data. Yeah, I'll do, what it, I'll do whatever is. I can and show you exactly how I'm coming up with it based on building permits, based on problem I have though is I don't have. I don't have to have my numbers done until May 22nd. Now we're working, and so in January, I, I may not know. I'll, I'll know this house is 50% complete or 30% complete, but I may not know that it's a million dollar house at that point. That's, that's kind of, I think, where the problem in, in keeping it up so, to date, that even if we did it on historical. Yeah, could you give us some data based on historical? Well, what we've done in the past is we've taken the number that was on the building we can only put that in the shop Sometimes we're close, sometimes we're not. 
different different things go into that. But that's I'll give you that. So is that something we're going to need that number within the next couple of weeks? Well, within the week, right? Because yeah. next week we have to have that number. I mean, that's that one number. way to approach the budgeting process. The other way to approach the budgeting process is to establish the budget based upon the needs and requests of the department and then figure out what the mill is and whether it's going up or not. You're so cute. What I don't want to do, though, is well, just say... Well, we know say, it's going to go up, so I'm, yeah, I'm saying let's, say let's at least kind of oh, start yeah. Like the requests are not going up. But I don't know what those well, are going to be on January 1st. Well, you mean if we add the total, it will go over? I don't so know. I'm saying look at historical data from last year and tell us what our growth has been. We know our growth is more this year. If we can look at our, our data from last year and you can tell us what our growth was, that's a conservative number. And, and I, I agree with what you're saying. Yeah, I'm too. just saying we need that data to know if we're going to be able to even keep it yeah, close to the yeah, same. To know. Yeah, because I'd love to be able to tell the public, hey, we want to keep it the same, not we want to increase it 5% or 10%. See, and the beauty of knowing what that number is, is you would be able to say either we're keeping it at the same or it's still slightly lower based on where we think this number is coming in. Because even if we knew what that number was and the budget request, I know what's coming in the roads department later, so I'm not. How hard is it to move to the district? It's impossible for each other. That's too bad. Because yeah. it would be easier to know. Although, again, I don't think you say, oh, well, we've got this many dollars, therefore we should spend it. No, I just No, no, no. I just don't get me wrong, that's not that where I'm going. Yeah, yeah, but. <laughs> but having, yeah, having the conversation over funding today with Brett over the road in Croydon and what that number is and then what his plan was that will present later. I know it's coming. We've been hearing that on the roads for how long? Yeah. Well, well thank you. That's helpful. Thank you. Is there anything else, Holler? Thanks, Glenn. Thanks, Glenn. One of the questions that came up yesterday, sorry, I've forgotten. Do you have, do you have the, the, the other county individuals who come up, or by statute, or can you restrict just your own county residents? For motor vehicle? Um, we are, I've had a conversation with Monty Roberts, who's the head honcho. Technically, as contract that we should help everybody and honestly if they come in our door and they're there physically we do not turn them away but if they call on the phone we tell them we're only helping them in county residents and out on the state's website and our own website it states we are only helping them in county residents and that has helped us.
I was in the same thing. You want to sit there? I'm good. <laughs>
proposal is to add another 16,000 mm -hmm. wages and then whatever else would be in the benefit of the I just wonder why this benefit number is so much higher than the one in the situation. This is 625. This is the one. 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 This So the AE yeah, is including so, the five point you know, we're increasing yes. the benefit number by five percent. And while we were out this four hundred and eighty three thousand dollars, it should be roughly a twenty four thousand dollar increase, not an increase of Now, your total includes any increases in retirement and that kind of stuff. That we're using the same numbers as last year, but those are not right. Or is there an increase in retirement based on some of your assets? Let me make sure that my chart updated this. What was budgeted last year was budgeted last November with the deputies that were here last November. Mine is updated to include actual deputies that are here now, based on their actual wage now. Okay. Because remember last year. So this is more than just the deputies we had last year when we did the budget. That's and last year, year that's what I'm as we walked out of this group, we said add one hundred and ninety thousand dollars to their wages to accommodate us in position and a mm -hmm. and we need that for the company to decompress their wages. Last year was $190,000 to their wages to decompress them. I guess what Robert and I are asking is, is that one ninety reflected in this? In the wage. And then we're saying if it, if it was reflected here, what is accounting for the $150,000 increase in just total benefits to the bond year pay per year? Right here? Yeah. The actual deputies that work here now, the actual wages now, by like going out and looking at each other. What we want you to do is point that and identify the numbers that increased at 150000 per month. On the benefits? On the benefits. Right. Salaries are a wash. That's what raises my best. Why is benefits 150000 and salaries is only? Do you have benefits calculated? That's, that's the question is why. Why would one employee be three to six point five employee wages set five thousand and increase the debt of how do you think that's
his knowledge was complete because when we say uncompress his wage, I don't know what uncompressing his wage is. Somebody else has to uncompress his wage. And if you were going to make a holy position, <laughs> you're making a holy position, and you said, okay, all we want you to do is add a whole, just add a whole new line and a whole new number to it. To bring that up, just add it. That's already in this room that she gave us today. I want to have to go back and forth.
I was letting him digest this first before I throw a wrench in the whole thing. I'm good on the chairs. Not a for him. Okay. 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 Um, I had it in a, a separate page for emergency management, and the reason why is. The EMPG grant for next year, for the end of this year and going into next year, um, I had to have that in. I don't want to sound presumptuous that the budget was going to go through, but I put it in as I was a full-time emergency manager. And that's what the paper that I sent to you guys, and that's what you're looking at, is a full-time emergency manager. Um, the other thing about if you guys decide we want to be a full-time emergency manager, the bottom number is $89,500 that the state would, would reimburse the county. And they're willing to reimburse 50% if the emergency manager is a full-time position versus part-time emergency manager and part-time detective. So what percentage are they doing now? Isn't it 50% of the emergency management cost? It would be 50% of a quarter, but due to the past, we've only been able to get $7,000 in change through the EMPG grant. But that, that's just been it's not in the before. Correct. Right. Before it was 50% of, it's a quarter, because half time. Yeah, if, if you're half time, it's fifty percent of half time, so it's a quarter of the wage. Whether we make a half time, full time, three quarter time, it will pay half of the salary for the emergency manager. Right? Portion of it, and so if I'm half emergency manager, half detective, they'll pay for a quarter of my wage. Right. If I'm full time emergency manager, they'll pay for a quarter of my wage, a quarter for a secretary, or if I have an assistant, not a quarter. Yeah, a quarter of that if they're not full time as well. But travel, training, everything I have in my budget, they'll pay for 50% of it. So it wouldn't, it wouldn't potentially just be wages, it could potentially be half of whatever I have in my budget if that's training expenses, planning expenses, community outreach, anything I had in there, they would, they would fund 50% of that. Travel, training, all of that would be 50%. What's the exercise that is the, the expenses we're supposed to be planning it, uh, any kind of an exercise. Next year, I'm hoping to have some. No, I'm not getting paid to work out. It's, 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 it's a drill. Table -top Next year, I'd like to do a tabletop where we bring in all of the key players. The county is it a commission. It's a, it's a commission next year. We'll bring in. We'll use that. And next year, I'm hoping to do a. a Wildland fire exercise with Boyd and the state emergency managers to show what could potentially happen in a major wildland fire in Morgan and how we can work together to mitigate as much as possible. And then from that, we have other exercises we want to go forward, with, including ones with the schools and, and different things. But that is to help pay for some of that. And moving forward. So if if Austin moves on to emergency manager, do you fill his position then at a detective level or what? We would just restructure with the, the, the office to bring the money initially. So you you would end up going down how many percent? Yeah. But by doing that, I think it would free him up to do a lot more grants. I think we'd actually come out ahead with money for the county. 
right now, right now, what FEMA is doing in, in the federal government is the amount of money they pay out in emergency disaster declarations, the COVID and all that. The federal government's decided they're going to take six percent of that amount and turn it into disaster mitigation things, like any kind of a. Let's say that we want to earthquake proof our buildings. That would be something that we could go for that that funding. If we're worried about the power being out, we want to bring in a bigger generator. We could do that, but they're taking. 6% of everything they're spending this year. And that includes COVID money. So, yeah, next year potentially there's going to be grants out there in the billions of dollars. The, the only issue I have right now is we made the disaster declaration. I was trying to get the paperwork done today, but I got involved with an investigation that luckily the Sandy police officer that's helping us out hooked us up, and I didn't have to run to Sandy this afternoon, so I'm, I'm able to be here. But it's hard to juggle being the detective and the emergency manager. Um, because of the, the high wind event that we had, I've been working with FEMA for the last three weeks, and if we didn't have insurance, I wrote up in that that there's $253,000 that FEMA would reimburse the county. But unfortunately, when you work with FEMA, it chews up a lot, a lot of time. What? You mean the federal government is not a question you asked him? <laughs> you know, I thought I was going to have to bring him out here and drive him around. So they've, thanks to the COVID issues, they're a little more efficient because we were able to get on Google Maps and he'd just give me a list of things to go get the GPS location of the TV towers and the exact address and the exact measurements of the poles, the beams, every part of it. And so it was things like that that he asked me to do for him, which he would have done if we came out here, but it was nice to have him on Google Maps and say, okay, you see the fairgrounds, you see that big tree at the end of the exhibit building? It's gone. The tree next to it, still gone. That next one, gone. All, matter of fact, all those trees right there, they're all gone. And so it was measuring the circumference of the trunks a foot off the ground so that they could decide the cubic yardage of debris and if that no, was I, worth I pulling out. And, I, I believe that's a lot of work, don't get me wrong. My only concern here is I do not want another 2020 house, and I don't want you to be in this yeah. Convince me that convince me that 2020 is an anomaly and we're not gonna. Yeah, we're afraid oh, of 2020. Please tell me this is not the anomaly. I broke these again. If you think we're gonna continue down this. Path. If you honestly think that November 4th, oh no, there's not gonna be civil unrest. But that's 2020. What do you mean? <laughs> So, remember, Tina, remember how I stood up in here and I said that, that at the end of October, we're going to have a, a, a vaccine? Well, we kind of are. The problem is, is we're going to get about 3,000 doses in the state of Utah and they're going to health care. In November, we're going to have 75,000 doses come to Utah, still going to health care. If you're a nurse, if you're a nurse, we could, I could, be, well, we'll talk later. The, the reality of it is, when they first started talking about these closed pods, it involved all county employees, so you would have been covered. It involves first responders and their families. The way it's coming out now, it's first responders, period. So by next, by next March or April, it'll be firefighters, police, but it, it won't be their families, it'll just be them. And for the general public, it's going to, they're talking about the end of May, 1st of June. So for it to be... But those are high risk. Yeah, absolutely. And so for the general public, you're talking June, 
Well, the other part of this is if you saw the, the top skull part, and so the fourth tranche of Paris money is now off the table until after the election. Yeah. So we're done with that session for a while. Correct. And we have to spend what we do have. We opened it up for individual things. You can send through ones and twos. And send yeah, like I said. Like said. 1200 bucks. Like I said, anyway, what ultimately what we need, and this is what I've been told by multiple people down with the Bureau of Emergency Management at a state level, they don't want to supplant the sheriff's office. And so in years past, there's that's the reason why you had the emergency manager's budget and the ambulance with all the wages in the emergency manager's budget because the state wants to see that clear line delineation of if we're paying into the emergency manager's budget, it's going, or if we're paying the emergency manager's wages, we want to see it going to his budget. And so it's kind of become clear to me why the state sat me down last December and said, no more money for you. That's what happened last December when I first started meeting with the, the state over emergency management stuff. They said, look, no more money for mortgage. And so that's why we ended up with $7,000 instead of thirty, which was projected, which would have been a quarter of the wages that was from the past. And so, yes, am I asking for more? Does it look like a lot more? Yes. Having said that, if it's full time, we'll be able to recoup. But they won't pay any of the other expenses in that Is that what well, you're saying? Well, that's. They'll pay them if it's less, right? They'll pay them if it's less, but they're also going to want it in a separate GL account from the sheriff's office. Because what the state doesn't want to do is send me pay for training, and it's actually investigative training. It's going down to... So they just want a clear delineation Absolutely. of the emergency managers. And if you look in the, in the budget under administrative expenses, what the EMPG budget that I put in, that's so that the sheriff can administer my budget. So there's 5,000 and change that's going to go towards the sheriff's office. For Blaine's or Jim's wages, whoever's controlling the budget. So, so, yeah. But Stacy, if that's a requirement, that's not necessarily hard to do on the tracking side. That's just a GL line. Even if it falls under the sheriff's budget still, it's just the emergency manager would have a separate line under there? They don't have that. They're just empty, isn't there one still? There was, there was one there that was an emergency management budget. What we need to do is just plug all my stuff right. back and into that. Like we talked well, about at the time there. of the emergency, we, we feel like we're fully aware that we're going to have to move money over there. So it's not like we're not going to put money in that budget. We are very much aware that this was 2020. And we're going to move money never, in the budget. Never did I think when I started this that we'd, we'd hit a pandemic. I mean, I don't think anybody foresaw any part yeah, of that. We're, we're never more than two weeks away from pandemic. And we're the epidemiologist says that every time in our group. Yeah. But yeah, then we, you know, we end up with an earthquake where if you drove past the fire station, they quickly ran over here and pulled all their equipment out. Well, would anybody else be surprised if they saw the four horsemen of the apocalypse going down? Or aliens? Or aliens? So. But, but the reality of it is, is, is this is probably going to be a heavier snowpack than normal year. So we, when was the last time you read it? And was it for this year? Did they just change it? They always fight each other. Well, according to Kevin McEnany, who's... According to Kevin McEnany, the, the National Weather Service guy that works with us, Northern Utah is going to have higher than normal snowpack. He, no, he's a weather dude for the National Weather Service. 
Next Wednesday, I'll tell him. Hey, by the way, Sarah Swan from Morgan said you need to read the Farm Farmer's Almanac. Right. So I just crunched the numbers here for my own benefit here. Based on your current wage and benefits, if you're part time emergency manager and we get everything we can from the NPG grant, we would get $30,537. Correct. If we make this adjustment, you go to full time emergency manager, and I assume you have somebody that can be the detective yeah. in the current roster. Yeah. Essentially, what we're doing is moving it to a different line item so that you have it in a separate thing. It would still be on the sheriff's office, but it's a separate line item. Yeah. Um, these, these line items below your salary and benefits total are $54,000. But the increase that we could receive from the EMPG grant, moving from 30,507 to 89,500 is $58,993. In other words, we come out about $5,000 ahead. No, I think. No. Right? No, no, because they'll Sorry, still only pay half of this salary. They're going to pay half. So it's, but they're going to pay, pay half of all of this, right, which is $89,500. And, and a lot of a lot of those expenses are. So eighty-nine thousand minus thirty thousand five hundred is fifty-eight thousand nine hundred ninety-three dollars. Right, but they'll pay. They'll pay half. They'll pay that. The, that'll be like that'll be how much more they pay. So even if you did said he's now three quarters time, they would pay half of what the effort was. Half, half of the three quarters. Yes. Exactly. But I'm saying in in this scenario, if you go from half time to full time, that grant would pay for everything listed on there. Then it would all of that. Plus a No. Because they're already paid, they'll still pay half of where it's at at half time. Yeah. And they will pay another half of whatever they, this increase is. So it won't cover all of it for, for getting that. That 89500 at the bottom is Sorry. for 50%. No, but right now they're not paying half, they're paying a quarter. No, they're, they're paying, not paying anything. They're, they would pay half. Of whatever time he spends, not a yes. quarter. But because he's half time, they're paying half of his half time. No, they don't. Yes, yeah. half of his half time, which is a quarter. Yeah. Right. That's that $30,000. Right. But, Correct. But what I'm saying is, if every member on here isn't half of whatever he spends, whether it's quarter time, whether it's half time, whether it's three quarter time, the number is still a half. Right? So next year, next year. If we leave everything the same next year, they would pay forty-four thousand seven fifty. With these numbers, here. with those numbers right there, they pay okay. forty-four. So forty-four versus eighty-nine. Right. Yeah. Forty-four. Oh. But if this total increase is one seventy-nine, not five thousand, one seventy-nine. Well, but that that one seventy-nine is not as. We didn't even set it. But that's the budget. That's what everybody said. 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 That's by the time we're done. So I just want to make sure that I'm not saying I'm not going to say we shouldn't have it full time. I just want to make sure that we're clear on where that money comes from. So if they're willing to do an 89,500 match, it's because the county is spending 89,500 on our side. So if we're increasing him from 40,000 to 80,000, we still have half of that. That's my only point. I think we're on the same page. We're just going. Yeah, that's making looking at it different. Right. Yeah. What I'm saying is, right now we're only getting a quarter of his wage from them because he is half time. If we were getting half, if he were full time now, we'd be getting half of his wage. So that it, that increase is more than just half. The, the, from what my only concern on it would be what it looks like long term because if you lose a detective, then you're going to have to pay for it. Are we losing? Are we going through that next year and ask for the detective level? Or are we just adding 
So we actually have we actually have somebody that can step in and take that position and do that from our roster. The only difference is, is now he's not split between two different things where he's doing it. I'm not saying he's doing anything half past. Yeah, I'll say that. We're doing one here and he's got to jump over and do this one. I mean, like they, it's more it's hard to work on an emergency management position, trying to do that stuff. Why bring another case to him that we had already gotten solved? And start working on that. So he has to step away from his emergency management stuff. Plus, we have this coming up tonight. So it's going to be a little bit bright. So, so he's, he's being pulled in different directions. I know how much it takes to do that. So, so coming yeah. back to yeah, our, that's true. Our, <laughs> that's true. Maybe this wow. is a good way of looking at it. Well, under, well, I'm just getting started. But. Under the current scenario, what or what he's asking for is an increase of fifty-four thousand dollars overall in budget. Because his salary is not changing, we're just talking about this other thing. But what he's telling us is, if we are willing to do this, we're looking at a approximately fifty-eight thousand dollar increase in revenue from the grant. Right. Does that we're all, make sense? Yeah. But we're also adding. If I'm getting this right, what you're presenting is that we want to add a thousand dollars to travel. That's under. We're not taking the travel portion out of the out of the sheriff's budget. We're Correct. No, we're that's that's the fifty-four thousand I'm talking about. All of this is fifty-four thousand. The hundred twenty-five is coming from this kind of budget. So if you right. take one seventy-nine minus one hundred twenty-five, the difference, all those line items, is fifty-four thousand. Right. That's the total. The other nice right. thing about the concern, the, the only concern is that as long as because I know we're over one is that we're not going back and adding, because that's not an overall savings if we're replacing and in the sheriff's yeah, department. Yeah, I have to restructure. Yeah. So it's a savings if we're moving it completely out and we're not replacing we're not the position. Yeah. Yeah. But we're also adding to that line item, our having the travel, the community outreach, the training, the exercise, not, I'm expecting a really nice Zumba class, and EM support staff, is not part of that, but the other funds. But those half of those line items are not in the sheriff's budget now. They would come over, and half of it would be compensated along with half of the salary. Uh, also, but but also adding to that, where I put emergency support staff in that EMPG grant, I added in both the secretaries for the sheriff's office, and so <coughs> the way I anticipated it is getting with Penny in H in HR and having them have two things they can click on. If they needed to come help me do something with emergency management, they would pull out of that support staff. I know... Do they feel like they've got extra time? I thought they were pretty busy doing what they're doing. I don't want... You know how this went over at the fire station where... I, yeah, this is originally... The assistant over the fire department was hired Number one, because she was, they were an EMT, and number two, because their wage got pulled out of this. And so they were involved over at, this, over at the ambulance station, they were involved in doing all the paperwork, getting the LAPC stuff going, which I'm really struggling with because I just don't physically have enough time in the week to get everything done that I need to get done. Anyway, this support staff over there, that was their job. And then when the pager went off, they would quit that job, go run on the ambulance, and come back. Because back in 95, we didn't have enough people to work during the daytime. Right. So it was the ability to have your, your emergency manager slash ambulance supervisor and support staff. So you had two people guaranteed over there. To, right. For and coverage. They, they never had time to do the, the emergency manager stuff that they were resubmitting because they were busy doing all of the other things that they were doing on the ambulance. My concern is that's that we probably not what upset the state. Yeah, exactly. They didn't. And, and, and I know that's what happened because mm -hmm. it always came last because an emergency call was going to come first. Correct. But that's my concern in the sheriff's department is if we're allocating time for those two secretaries that have responsibilities that need to be there for those calls and for those I for the things they're already doing in full time salary, is it realistic to say they could provide half of their time to be EMS support staff and have half of it compensated. That's I've seen that go terribly wrong in the other department. 
Especially when they've already got a job description and they're already busy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's. Yeah. So, I'm not saying no. So am I supposed to? Like, like, am I supposed to ask for a part-time person to help me? Well, you can ask. Ask all day if you'd like. But but. Well, yes, yeah, you. There you go. Yeah. One way or the other. <laughs> Maybe it's a combination. So ultimately, if that doesn't work, then obviously that's gone. Yeah. Well, in all reality, it is an option. That is that is part. I put of I put that in there with the EMPG grant, knowing that give or take, I don't know if it was going to work out tonight, but I shot for the moon with the EMPG grant because it closed. Well, I don't know if they would have to do it on the grant that I was doing. Yeah. Well, I don't know if they would have to do it on the grant that I was doing. Do your best. And so you do your best, and if I go back to them and say, well, I don't, it's still just me. Yeah. They just won't compensate you for it. Right. I, mean, I won't ask for it, they won't compensate That's why we're looking at it with our current staff. We can just say, if, if, but if they've got, if they've got time that they can get, that works. So if they don't have time, they don't have time. Which, if I was, realistically, if I'm full time, then I, I would have to have time to dedicate to this, to get an LADC stuff and everything going on. Because they keep sending me a list of this, and it's like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do that. I just not know it, and I just stay out of the way to We're not moving on. Now. You guys haven't given me a chance to get into that. Okay. Well, I'll be fine. Little jabs, but I... <laughs> oh, you volunteered your wife's salad. And he wants a backpack to go with it. A new one. Okay. We're not talking money. We're not talking anything here. We're talking about the... I'm following. You've sat here with me longer than anybody in this room, with the exception of Stacy, well, and Debbie and Tina. Been here forever as long as they have. And you've been through this process year after year after year. You and I have personally had these discussions and debates over this issue by itself. And we've discussed the dangers of creating positions based on payment of salary from grants. And we've witnessed how that's collapsed and the problems that that caused when I'm dealing with that directly. How do you justify that now that you're on the other side of this? Sell me on it. Tell me why it's different now than it was. I think. Great question. <laughs> I'm going to give you credit for that. Well, we've always been straight with each other, and I want to be straight with The now. reality of it is, Robert, when I took this position, never in my wildest dreams did I think of it like this. I thought, okay, la di da, we'll deal with flooding about every 10 years, not a big deal. I'll have plenty of time to deal with the pre disaster mitigation grant. And I know at one point when we were both sitting up there, we were told that grants are drying up. Well, some grants are drying up and some grants are opening up. You've got to have the time to dedicate to go chase those grants. You know that when you're working over at the schools. And so I got this brick grant coming up that I just passed up on. The state of Utah is going to get $50 million this year. In Morgan County, we went for zero. Because I didn't have the time to deal with it. I got for investigations, and I, this isn't a pity party because I know exactly how hard you guys work. But the day before Labor Day, I got called out to go do an investigation on an issue that we can talk about later that involved getting the FBI involved, the Joint Terrorism Task Force involved. And so the next day I get ready to go down and meet with the Joint Terrorism Task Force. We had a windstorm for Pete's sakes. Who, 
How many times have we had these windstorms come into Morgan, or come into Utah, about every four or five years? They always hit the Wasatch Front. Up, up where I live in Round Valley, we lost buildings that have been there for a long time, over a hundred years. We lost buildings up there. Look at the damage we had. Just the damage I turned into FEMA is $253,000. Then if our insurance company didn't have, I could recoup that. But the problem is, is that sucked all the oxygen out of the, out of the room for me when it came to work. And by the time we got FEMA involved and everybody involved, I, when Corey said, I don't want to say that Austin's been half-assing things, well, guess what? I'll say it. I honestly feel like I haven't been able to dedicate the time I need to dedicate to investigations or emergency management. I just, I get torn back and forth. I get halfway through trying to do something and a deputy walks in and needs help. So I set that down, I go help him, and by the time I try to get back to what I'm doing, something else has gone wrong. And so, we can hope and pray that the future it'll calm back down. I would, I would hope nobody in this room is naive enough to think that we're going to go back to 2007 lifestyle. Well, that sucked. Well, 2010? 2010? Hell, I don't know. You tell me what year it is. 2018. 2018. We'll go with Randy. Uh, yeah, let's, let's go with 2018. But it's evolving. Realistically, what I've found is, is this is truly evolving. And those brick grants, they're changing it. And what FEMA doesn't want to do is FEMA doesn't want to come out and be the sugar daddy and start handing handing money out to anybody anymore. What they want is they want people to get prepared. And so in 1983, Morgan did something that was pretty freaking cosmic that nobody else in the state of Utah has thought of. When you're you, when, in your taxes, you actually pay a little bit of money into a flood fund. But you never take it out of the flood. Well, guess what? We're going to take, we reduce it in 2011, and it helps us meet the match with FEMA. And so it's back like 10 years ago, or December, whichever was soonest, it feels like it was forever ago, when I went to a uh, Utah Emergency Managers Conference, they stood up and they said, look, what FEMA wants you to do is FEMA wants you to have some kind of a disaster fund that you're putting money into. And everybody's like, holy crap, how are we going to do that? And I sat there next to guys that have been in the business for 20 plus years, and I looked down and I said, Morgan's already doing that. <clears throat> Their jaws dropped. They're like, what? And I said, yeah, we have a flood fund that everybody that pays taxes pitches in a little bit of money every year, and it just accumulates. And it's intended to help with the human that's just what it's there for. So that's exactly it. Pay for any damage. Like when, when will you know if you've received the Right. Not the FEMA. Well, that bucket that Bonnie won't let anybody touch was the FEMA match from 1983. Right. That is sitting over here because nobody will, what's the word you always get at it before? Reconcile it. And nobody dares touch it because if they come back from 1983 and go back and say, let's see your records from 1983. So we've got two flood funds. Okay. But there's two well, flood funds. But okay. the mill levy is not, to, not for FEMA. But it's for mitigation, correct? I am proud of being known to the person who focuses on reconciliation. I just want you to know that. But, it, that but it's for mitigation, hard. right? There's, there's words that that mill levy is for. But it's and so, I'm not being proud of that. Correct. 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 What it is, what it is, is it's for mitigation. And that's Even what FEMA wants flood. to have happen. Even if it's flood, flood mitigation. That it, or, well, can we use it for windstorms? Can we use it for any other disaster? Because my understanding is we have to have a big flood in order to use it. Correct. Do you know how many trees are in the river right now? If we don't, because of that wind event, if we don't go get the trees out before oh, next spring, we're in trouble. And so, and so, so what I'm saying is, there you go. Yeah. Finally, got to use the 
She planned it this time. Well. <laughs> I didn't know. Purposely wanted to do it right at election time. So we, <laughs> we couldn't convince her or anything. Exactly. Yeah. She had already signed all the paperwork and everything. She was she was on the primary ballot well, to be I didn't know if it would work. So I was I was it didn't work in the red. That wouldn't have done it. I understand. I have to do it. <laughs> I did. I heard it. No. So, not people I know like really well, just they live somewhere else. You know. I, if you know it uh, well on social media, you know, saw a picture that has them holding something, or I'm standing behind someone. So, yes.
opposed to Susan having no hope in the life Did those checks go out? Yeah. Did the checks go out? The CARES ones? I can't get help you that. I I was just curious. I registered for it. was a Put it on my
it's such a good job on the records and it be very clear where all the animal calls were at.
maybe later, but if I cut it in half, I'm reducing the calories. Until later. We used to have scientifically shown how to have a cookie is a quarter of the calories. It's kind of like that grant we were doing. One day called my name from years ago. I don't know.
thought we were going to have the extra snow load this year. So but Sarah says we're not. So who do you trust? Sarah, Austin, Sarah, Austin. Wait, Austin said this. I heard that. Which one did you do? Did you do the one that said more snow? No, there's one that's lower. Is there one that's better? I read one that was more. And there's the other one that's some association. 2020 is probably going to be Yeah, I feel like we're going to get sun out before. We will know May 1st. Oh, yeah. we, we did oh. buildings and grounds. We'll know May 1st. What kind of winter we have? So, what are we moving to next? Okay, so we're good there. We're going to talk about uh, the roof on the capital funds. Yeah, let's go ahead and bring that up now. You want to bring it up now? Because that's the courthouse building and grounds. It's not going to change this. Remember, you guys asked me to find out what would be the next capital expenditure to do on the building. We've already done with that. So. We've already yeah, and yesterday I was pushing for a new building, and then we've had more people come in that I'm done asking for a new building. Yeah. So. <laughs> Here we can put it. Here we can put it right in the parking lot. And then I'll just have to make this a parking lot. I know. <laughs> three story. Great one. plan. Three story one will put the court on the bottom. Stacy have her own floor. There you go. Three <laughs> penthouse. <laughs> so over the last ten years, we've pretty much replaced the entire roof on this building, with the exception of one building that's never been replaced and it leaks all the time. About thirty-five years. So remembering. So that's what we're going to do. Is that out of this budget? No. As I said, it's not going to affect any of these budgets. It's out of the capital expense fund. We have. Um, Clark, Clark's, Clark's repair at least three or four times a year. And that's just, that's not going on all the It's got patches all over. So you're yeah. just putting a roof on the auditorium, on the portion. And what's about the estimate on it? About 18.5. How much do we receive in revenue? It's a little over 100000 And so that's a tax. $100,000 plus the amount. I didn't break. So that's one of those self balancing funds. Back in the back. Mine's yellow. Yeah, that's what we spend. So whatever we bring in is what we can spend and what we don't because it's, it rolls over onto itself. We did spend most of it this year. So the money we collected this year, we pretty much found that out on the windows, but we have a fund balance volume of data over 100,000. So we could do the roof. I looked it up, we only have about three. Yeah. Right, exactly, about 100,000. So we've got about 100,000 in the fund balance. Okay. And so that doesn't show in the budget to get any money or whatever. Okay. And so that's why I haven't really brought up the so that. So we can go ahead and do that. So what you're saying is the 18 is going to break for the Seven hundred. If you flip back to the very back of your book, there's a. Strike it 
Yeah. 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 This is going to Capital Fund, 44. You just said there was nothing left there. We're all with the same people that can't park and the same people that drive on our shoulders. <coughs> we'll, uh, let's go ahead. That, that amount, we don't have to have this permission anyway. <laughs> yeah, we could just do it, but I, I haven't even thought about it. I haven't even thought about this. First I, thought about it. I, I was thinking of waiting for that, but it's not. If he's going to reach back up for We'll see if the 9300 is a good question. So are you adding yeah. that to the district budget? Or the district? Yeah. Yes. It's for 20 points. Hey, Stacey, we're going to do another budget adjustment. But it's... Yeah. I'm going to say that. Then we come out of capital. And how much was that now? For real? Oh, that's just straight. Just straight. Just straight. We can't... Too late in the year for this. We don't have all the money. I suppose if it's come out of here and not put us over budget, we just let it be. I didn't know why that you we can set aside forty thousand for that project, not thirty. We knew it was gonna cost us thirty to yeah, because we asked to take it because we knew we had the same and I've got price on that too. And there's a total between what we transferred in the thirty well twenty nine and change that we transferred in January. What's accumulated so far this year was another like fifteen thousand. So it's about forty-five total in the fairgrounds capital improvement. And we knew we were just guessing because we didn't have more than we were just on the thing. Yeah, that was just happening the year So Clegs are gonna put them back up for fifteen just like they took them out for fifteen. We don't the, the concrete's gonna cost between fifteen and eighteen. So concrete number. If I get that done in the next two or three weeks, then they can put them on November, December, kind of an early winter project. And I can I can have a lot of it done. I don't want to be in a mess come April when I have ice cream. We've already got a lot done. So if it's 15 to 18 for that concrete, there's not quite enough in there, but if we've already paid for 15 out of this budget, I'm inclined to just leave it in this budget. Yeah, that's it. Right. He didn't put us all for the Okay, that's my thought. Let's leave it in this budget, and then there'll be plenty of the right. capital improvement to finish that project. So we're already over budget. Mm -hmm. in this department, so that would be a budget adjustment. Already. Okay. 
but if you want to go ahead and make, you can add it to the list of it says we are oh, yeah, current actuals oh, over our budget. Right. Your benefits is what's put us over. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah
probably be a lower price. The reason for that is they have to cut the asphalt to make it work. Otherwise, otherwise, it would have been in a rebuild situation. It was a lot thicker level. Of course, just driving off with them big trucks was making soft spots. To make it work how we did it, it, worked. it turned out great. We just didn't more asphalt. It's a great job if anybody's been on it. You need to show it. I'm sure most of you have. It turned out great. It just costs us a little more. So, Greg, is that the year I'm guessing is the 857 Is that right? Yes. Okay. Um, so, Stacey, you're saying that we have done the budget adjustment down to the 927? Or is that before we do the budget adjustment to take the special accommodation? Um, well, I thought we started with 510. And then we were getting about 4.5. And we took 4.5 back out. So that put us back down to 510. It says 9.7. That's what I'm trying to touch on. It can't be 343. The actual budget is 9.7. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 So the actual budget on highway project should be 412 Okay. Four. So that's what's written in right here. That's right. That it just hasn't been fixed in back in September 3rd when his report was when, when mm -hmm. I handed that budget for mm -hmm. So we haven't done the budget adjustment that we had back in September 3rd. So in order to make him whole, I know we talked about this in May, but did, didn't we just say we were moving that out of the general to when we told him to go forward? Yeah, I didn't know we were going to move that out of the general fund. Yeah. Because we weren't getting that out. Right. And the reason I put it on the national railway is just to show you where the whole point is. So the head was, well, the extra 343 went to Grand Valley? No, 206 went to Grand Valley. The 32 is going to go to Natchez on our other project. See, this year, in 2020, we didn't budget anything for that. Last year we did. Yeah. We need to think about that. That's on the yeah. We still got the we talked about now that. We were, they kind of led you to believe with the postponement that we weren't going to have very much of a match, but then they ended up doing it in the way. Between the three bridges, yeah. it's adding up to that. That's the problem. If we had one, it would have been So the theory is that the allocate and having to pay off those matches in sections every year so that you're not ending up with a huge match when the, we know the project's coming. If we divide it into three smaller chunks, it's easier than coming up with the big chunk. But, big how chunk. We, but how we pay you UDOC is depending on how much work they do and we match with the payment contractor. So the, the design on the current grid is over 600000 We pay 6.7% of that and that's obviously at first. But I could be a civil engineer. And then the problem with the starter bridge is nothing was paid on the starter bridge until I came. And then I had to catch up that and it's still over this year. So help me understand this, right? Because I'm, under I'm misunderstanding it because I thought that we knew what the project was eventually going to cost when they finally get to it and they're always a little Wait. slow. But they're doing it in chunks and you're just matching it as they're paying the engineering fees along the way. So that's why, and that makes it easier than catching up. We've got a close figure we know what we're going to pay in the end, but we don't know how how long the project's going to yeah. take. Because they're not going to charge you until they until the contractor builds in and then the rest is 6.7%. But it's not officially due until the project is complete? Is that the difference of how we're trying to, to no. keep up as it's, we go? It, it's due as the project goes on. Like we are, a lot of this money that we match on, on the growing bridge is, is paid because of the and other stuff that's been So even though we're not seeing the bridge, we're just keeping up with what's going to be. Yeah. Okay. So it's a three and a half million dollar bridge. It started out as a two point one. Now it's a three and a half million dollar bridge. In in Croydon? Yeah. Wow. And every time you guys are pretty and, expensive. It does, <laughs> and it doesn't solve any of our traffic yeah. problems. No. no. Because all it does is replace an old bridge. But I'll tell you what, if you go across that bridge with one of the semi trucks, you can feel when it needs to be replaced. Oh, I can. I, I have no doubt that it it's needs to be It's going to be a lot wider. It's going to be better for slower. It goes up so it doesn't overtop as easy. 
still not going to be a deal. Yeah, I won't be rebar hanging down for the two groups to snack on now. So that the trucks will be able to turn on. I thought we should put a few more down to snack as a bars. I thought that was a little round and big. But sitting out the budget adjustment. So, 343 is what's like this budget adjustment. Well, right now, if we don't do anything else, but... You're not necessary to do it. So, we missed a hustle. I think we're going to have to do 43. I think I'm going to use 857. All right, so 343 is the budget adjustment. That's what we're behind right now. Stacey, will you make it 344 to submit? Let's get a little more than that because he's... 857 is the total cost that he's looking at. So, 858 since we're rounding. Okay, I'm good with that. But so your adjustment is 444 to 7,000. 344, 7,000. No, 444. That's what I thought you said. 774. 774. 774. So what does Brown Valley cost us? 200? 206, 220. So how much extra would it have had to do the different asphalt? The vehicle is 158 estimate. The engineer's estimate. Okay, so this so this is where I'm getting confused. We're only talking about adding Ram Valley in. Remember McConnell brought the point that our estimates were below what we had for budget and it would cover almost all of Round Valley. That's why we threw it in there. But now you're saying we're two hundred thousand? So no, that's no, total no. cost of Round Valley. No, that's not right. The asphalt prices did come in a lot lower in terms of the goods. They did come in lower, but the price. Round the Valley was a matter of money. No matter what, it was going to cost you $158,000 in our estimate. And up to $206,000. Okay, so it cost us an extra $50,000. Yeah. Well, I said. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to figure out is how we went for. 57 grand there, and you're saying we never budgeted the 132? <coughs> so there's 180 grand. How did we get to, what did you say, 444? Because I've added more just things that I'm going to need for the rest of the year. So that's, that's an estimate. That's an estimate. That 444 is an estimate. So, well, so Austin told me that we're going to have a really bad winter, so we're going to budget more salt. Now he's got to have a conversation with Sarah so that he can take that back out of his budget. Beyond that, though, at when would you be looking at next year's budget? It looks like you budgeted 500000 for highway projects. The other budgets remain the same, except senior equipment supplies and maintenance are going down. Is that correct? Yeah. 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 Seven to five. Mm -hmm. That should be all the same. Okay, so that should be seven to five. That should be seven to five. And then engineering, we haven't spent anything. We've got 5,000 budget to do the budget. So that makes yeah. something is wrong. Because I call it a block ass. We've got a couple of places where we can take a So this is what the trader is showing his receipts so far for the class B road fund. Looks like we got one January, March, May. Is that a September one right there? Oh, that's one September. Looks like we're going to be so for 76. Yes. Oh, sorry, I, I got distracted. Right, same same show. Show. You're fine. Four, I just, four, yeah, four. there's a miscellaneous replacement of asphalt mm -hmm. paper yeah. in there, but we so take that out. Yes, but it's not. Oh, yeah. So it's not. This is what we budgeted. Oh, so when we took that out, so 12 was in the dump. I always had it in the oh, so what? No, I thought we started with 510. In here, yes. But not. 
in just as in some of the areas that we So take me <coughs> Okay, so let's the project would have went better 
than mm -hmm. like we thought. Maybe you could have saved twenty five thousand. It went just the opposite. Okay. When we when we start, we started with five ten. Okay. You brought in your estimates. That was like four four ten or something like that. Okay. And so then Robert made the point. Okay, with the difference, they have about an extra ninety grand, ninety to a hundred thousand left that we would put towards Round Valley, and we knew we would have to come up with the extra to do Round Valley, and that's and then we would I on my I don't have a problem with the extra fifty grand on the extra so asphalt worth, that we have. So you're one or the other ninety. Well, no, I'm trying to figure out how we're going to do it. I think I went on other going stuff to, to that point. So if we, started, and stuff like that. if we started at 410, right, was where we were about at. And then we added 206. That puts us at 600,000. And then we add another 132 in the match. That's 700. And, that's our number. That's where it went. And you've got other stuff that comes out of that, too. Size our asphalt project. You've got shoulder that goes along with that. And there's miscellaneous stuff that adds up quick. Oh, see, I thought, shoulder, I thought shouldering was in our business. Oh, okay. So, okay. But that's where it is. Yeah, if you add that, if you start at 410 and you add the 206 for round value and another 132, you're right close to that. So, 22,000. So if I add up your 2021 request, the 500 projects, and then the other things that you have on the case, I come up with 597 and 5,000. He changed, so the one is supposed to be the same. So if you put the supplies and maintenance, he had 5,000, it should be seven. And then engineering, he wanted to keep that 5,000. So if we keep that the same, we can still do high pro high risk drugs. Five ninety seven. Not as much as we did this year. It, it'll it'll cut us back compared to what we did this year. But we can be more like the year before. Still just doing stuff now. So, so that, my question to you is if our production for five hundred and ten this year, there's our trend for this year so far. Five ten last year, can we get to five ninety seven this year? That's stretch. I, I think just in what they're doing, that five ten isn't what they did. Mm -hmm. That's twenty nineteen number, their actual. Okay. So in twenty twenty, between twenty twenty and twenty twenty one, yes. But for a one year jump, that'd be more than what we could have done. But for a two year jump, which is really what we're talking about, okay. probably. But the question, I we come back to roads every single time. If we don't come up with a way to make up the difference between what we should be spending every year and what we actually spend every year, we're, we're getting farther and farther behind. Oh, you keep pulling it from the general fund. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't think we're getting farther and farther behind because we're getting farther and farther ahead in our roads. But we're spending... We still have road projects. Right. But that. we're spending over the B and C road we, money that we have in, yeah. we made in good, order to do that. We and that's good, the point. We've made good progress, but we took money to do it. So with so the intent that once we trend? get caught up, right. Class B road funds will do a better job of covering the cost of Yeah. So how do we keep this trend rents. going until we catch up? I want to get you're behind saying, you saying you well, can't. You're saying do a transfer like we have in the past where we transfer two or three hundred thousand dollars out of yeah. general fund to help with roads. Well either that or allocate it. You have take it out of that allocation and, set, and, and make sure that it's there, yeah. that's so that you know that's where it's supposed to go. Mm -hmm. And the corridor preservation fund, I think it was, is so, was listening to what's this? Yeah, so, and that's the other thing Brett and I talked about because that's what they brought forward and so they wrote. And my concern with the other two members on COG is if they're splitting down with projects in the city, then it doesn't really work very well for us as an increase to that unless we can guarantee that that there would be county projects out of that. Well, so, we probably, I'm sure we get projects out of that, absolutely. Well, 
Well, but that's my concern. If the tie is beating this on the allocation of the funds and the, and the city is qualifying for it, then we can't plan on all of that. That's what I was trying to get half of. Yeah, That's what you're trying to get half of. But I've talked to you Yeah, there's my concern. If we take the other half, that'll do the back, back row. So my concern is if it's a county tax that we just compete for, then why am I Give letting it to the city? <laughs> If, if we don't have a project, I don't have a problem giving more to the city. But if we have projects, then yeah, we need to buy harder for them. Yeah, the city, has, the city has the same problem with their transportation budget as we do. That's why they raised the tax that they did. So the question is, are there other projects? We talked about the back road in Croydon, but are there other projects that we could find? We talked about the road. There are four the roads that qualify that you can spend it on. It's got to be a collector or a junior road. So. Morning Valley Drive, we just fixed that road. The old highway, the road from the cement, the Croydon road from the cement plant up to the county, to some county line, and the floor all the way up to where the houses are, qualifies, and they've got to do that. Now we're going to need that, but that's going to be next year. Yeah, yeah. You know well, I mean? it'll be two years, right? Because we're well, going to do the bridge 2021. So we budget, we talk about uh, this time next year, we're destroying the road, we're going to destroy it. We're going to have to put money in somewhere to fix it. So it would be okay to spend some money. This is how you feel better about it, right? Think of what you want to
have the bond transfer. Is everybody comfortable with keeping that number, number in addition to the bond the next question? Okay. We've talked about the tension between the like 115 to 216. I was getting appropriated. Robert was here? 280. That's my thought. That the bond payment finished up, as you see, that we were transmitting to you. In general, yeah. Because it was 280. Okay, but we're still going to draw it at the end of the year. Correct. I find that it was 267. That's what it is right now, it's very minute. I think that was a double I'm pretty sure it was only about 160. Okay, so where's our savings? That's it. We were transferring over. We were transferring over. We were transferring 300. Go to your I didn't vote for it, by the way. It was closer to 300. Yeah, because we were transferring over 300. But just to be clear, I didn't vote. Where are you coming out of that's your last thing. You're just making this one on paper. Yeah, exactly. So, so Brett, that's what we what we were talking about over here is if we need broken we should pay on the bond every year as in addition to the B and C, because that get us close enough to continue the trend of cash now. That helps a lot there. That's the reason we're catching up. Like Robert said, we can't spend it. We can't spend it, we can't spend it, we just won't go we won't go as far. It's just what I want to know what our it start out of our fund balance is so to about four and then we made a double pay for the first year. Is that a last line item of the ninety five? We must have been doing extra money that projected for roads that was worth down with this year. Have they been lying to me for all these years? So you're saying 1.4, one, one how much is going to be left at the end of the year? We don't know yet. So our savings, our home balance is funded at Singapore and Singapore. We're not looking at that. Each one is that functional over here. Treasure's office is just running the bank right now, and I'm spending money over here. Regardless of what's sitting in the bank, we're not, we're not touching okay, it. I want to go to the bank. That's my question. $1.4 million. We've been transferring that to the payment itself. Is that a fund balance? We're not on the same page. That's okay. We're not on the same page. So, so that's sitting in the bank. It'll come later. Okay. And, and it's not going to be used at the end of the year. So we're not going to be using it every day. Treasure Dog is putting money in your revenue pages. And it's trying to match everything that you said you're going to collect from. Uh, no, you don't put the damn thing over in that garbage can. <laughs> Girls, you're both pretty. Knock it off. <laughs>
a library grant, a library grant, my election grant, a liquor bottle grant. We actually was able to, we were able to. Well, so, okay, so what Did you just say we actually was? Yes, there are. No, she did not. I told you she's the grammar police. So, I do that if you get the attention that we're talking about. Use that no. grandma? Well, when I say stuff like, I didn't have to be listening and I still think that. Yeah, well, you don't want to be talking. She's not listening to me. I don't know. But I do, <laughs> I do it. I'll be in a meeting full of people with a doctorate, some masters, and when I want to make a point, I will say something like that, and all of a sudden, their phones go down, they look up, and they're paying attention to me. Because they want to hear how else you're going to talk. Yeah, how else you're going to talk. First, they look up, they see what I was even doing because of that, and then they start paying attention to me. So, Brett, on your public works, it doesn't look like you're asking for any so we we talked about yeah we talked about it and we did we talked about it what he needs there we'll get up to it when we go back we're talking about fleet now words are your tools hey fleet's in the day Karen is cleaning words are your tools they are 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 What's that? Where did you find the bond payment, Mike? Because when we were doing that lease with John Deere, we only paid $800 a year for a brand new backup. It was great more than that. I probably have need research this year because of the plan. Where are we going? Where are we going? I spent $12,000. We're going to use it for a while. Yeah, I knew you were. You know what I mean? That's the one that we want to talk about. You're part of the fleet right now, if you want. Or do we want to do it right now?
So um, what his proposal was is if we added about, well, we add $20,000 to his budget, he in figures fleet. in fleet, he figures he can, between the savings on not doing maintenance on the Volvos that we're running constantly now, and the money that we spent on the grader this year that we shouldn't have to spend at least next year, um, that would give us the $40,000 that we need to make this year's payment on a new park truck. Did I, did I get all that right? Yes. 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 Okay. How many more years on this Three. Is that three more years at home? On the 19th. Oh, okay. Three more years. Three more years. We think so. We haven't confirmed. It'll, it'll be the same type of lease deal with the dollar value. Yeah. So we go from 95 to 115. Is that what you're saying? Correct. And then we look into the same place that the sheriff's office is. Yeah, the same lease. Yeah, the, the current, the one that we bought in 19 is financed through the bank here on a lease. The sheriff's office uses bank court for their leases on their trucks. We were going to try to see if, if there was any better deal through them. And I don't know that there would be. It probably wouldn't be a huge savings, so I'd still budget the 40000 for it. Maybe it's, but it'd be about the same amount of water as you But that's the point. The claims are very easy. To, it, it took me a while to get it done. He said it was he said Bancorp was separate from Ford. Because they used to do Ford. They used to do it through Ford, but yeah. then they moved to well, I remember that. He said they used they to do. But anyway, yes. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll look into it, but that's what I tried to tell him. Yeah. I said we could get virus. We could get vehicles with COVID money. We just have to come up with a reason why they're used for so a COVID call. A new truck total price is two hundred and eight thousand dollars for two oh eight. Two oh eight nine fifty two. That's just a pay cash. And there's the details. Man, we could pay cash if we had uh spaces of the one point four. I mean, I, I love that if we could. I don't know that we can. But. Can you use that to deliver garbage cans? Sure. There you go. <laughs> Cover down our garbage fund. <laughs> there goes our fund balance. If we now. don't plow the roads, we can't pick up the garbage. We've got to. It's got to come out of the garbage fund. So that's one of the, but that is, I guess that's meant to be at this point, that it's one of the costs we have in the balance over the garbage. We did a pretty good job of allocating the employees over that, not that many of the Exactly. Okay. Oh, right. So that's the other the other ask for Brett. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's getting his no, he's getting his trade in two thousand four. So oh my gosh. Thank you for asking. Yeah. So he's we have asking both of us because yeah. we made a decision. No, I told him I would take all the money, and I said I agreed too. So yeah, I'll take a third of the money. Um. So. The second part of this, so we're adding twenty thousand to his budget for that. Just for that. the second part of this is on the sheriff's side, and it coincides with Brett, and that is that he's asked for a new pickup truck for him, and then he'll take his and hand that down to his employee. We'll get rid of one of the old F one fifty, so we can use them to pull around trailers. So. So, uh, and the truth is, it's really not adequate for pulling heavy stuff because it's a half ton. We have four vehicles from the sheriff's office that are coming off lease, like they do each year. Um, they were going to keep one, but they just bought one, so they may not need to keep one. They'll probably end up turning all four, or, or being able to sell all four. We're typically getting ten to eleven thousand dollars on trading on those. So if we have four of them at ten thousand dollars a piece, that's forty thousand. We can pick up a, a truck, a three-quarter ton pickup, random, similar to what he's driving right now, just a newer model, or a new model for about thirty-five, thirty-six thousand. So where are you finding one for thirty-five thousand? It's gas. It's a gas. It's not a, not a diesel. 
Yes, and it's, this is a stripped down model. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles, bells and whistles yeah. like, like Roma yeah. has in kids. Hey, but right now, even <laughs> in vehicle purchases, you can totally, here's when you get doing two for one with vehicles. Oh, wait, you can get a two for one? There you go. Two for one. Well, anyway. Ask them about it. What that does is it buys us a, a vehicle outright. And we've done that the last couple of years. We've taken those that are coming off lease and just bought them outright. That's how we bought the truck that Austin's driving now. Um, so anyway. So how many miles are we these trucks? The ones that we're turning in? Mm, what did he say? The sheriff's. No, the sheriff's. Yeah, the sheriff's. He said like, I think he was. 60 to 70? Yeah. It's really low. Say. Yeah, it's not. Even if I think he might have said 50. Around 15,000. Well, those are 2019s? No, they're. No. Because the lease is four, four. years? Mm -hmm. they're okay. so, so they're four years old. 16 years. Yeah, 16 or 17. And then there was two. Um, <laughs> an escape. And, and then we've got, yeah, we've got this escape and a trailblazer that are sitting out here that I don't think are being used anymore. We need to confirm. Um, Do you know? Are they being used at all? The so planning department. Well, the planning got department got a new pickup last year. Which is what, to replace the trailblazer. Yes. So that's your trailblazer. And then the sheriff's office gave the plan, which is the escape. So that's the, your trailblazer. They gave her an explorer last year when, instead of turning one of them in. Okay. So last year we traded three and one. And Gwen kept that, you know, she kept a nicer explorer. So does the Wildland Fire get another truck? I don't know, we haven't talked to them about their aspect of food. Wildland fire, I don't know. Boyd had them. But Boyd kept us in the fire department. So that was a wildland well, fire. Play, and they played musical cars there because they Yeah, were, but I still don't understand why wildland fire needed a brush truck and a pickup truck for one person. And what happened to the brown, orange, copper colored truck that was for a truck that turned into days that snap back to the sheriff again? Well, yeah. Where is it? Well, that one, that one <laughs> they, they take in for the sheriff's department to pull that swift water the trailer. And they took the, tra the truck that we had that was for the swift water trailer. The truck with the uh, utility, utility, yeah. utility, utility bed. The oh, Fred's department has that. 2004 Ford that John's driving now because he's one fifty. And then we had another F-150 that was sitting over here that they used to tow those trailers too that went up and was sitting at the search and rescue lodge just this year. That was an older F-150 that had lower miles than the ones that Brett's... Not as low as we thought. It's not as low as we thought? 140. Okay. Well, yeah, instead of 180, right? Still 180. Yeah, I thought it was at 40,000. Yeah, I thought it was really low too. That's what he said. I swear that's what he said. It was super low. He must have been. He, he just assumed you understood that it was a hundred, so oh. he was just telling you the wrong thing. <laughs> well, anyway, we figured it was a little bit better shape, so we brought that down and gave it to Brad's crew to replace one of the other F-150s, which is now kaput, it sounds like. And that's a little beat up. The seats, the console and the seats broke. We're going to have to change the seat. We pulled it out of the other pickup and just walked it. Let's yeah.
Unless for insurance. Can, she can give me a sheet before we have all these. There's been some I've taken off. Yes. For insurance purposes. Well, and then, like with the sheriff and everything that he does, this guy's gotten an accident and come to find out because they failed to let us know who's got what anymore. They weren't copying insurance cards, and I didn't inform the insurance company that they were driving that car anymore. We lost camera blood square. Okay. Well, we can, we can do a, an audit and figure out which department has to work. I'll just get a list and we'll, we'll send out an email. Maybe you know, I'll coordinate on that. We'll send out an email and ask every department head to report back what they have. Wesley well, can give us a list of what she thinks we have. Plus or minus. My, my one question was, you know, we gave, when has that one explorer? That no, means the there's, for the sheriff's office, but there's no vehicles for any other office to just check out. And we've talked in the past about doing the motor pool so that the yeah, office needed to check it out. I, I still like that idea better than assigning them to a department, but I understand that probably the building department needs one all the time because they're sending an inspector out all the time. And I don't know what Gwen's office's needs are, so I guess we can talk sort of about it. But I guess the question is, from your perspective, is there a need for a motor pool? I don't necessarily think so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if I have any trouble, I'm car really first to be my trip to Oregon. And that's never otherwise you've got needs to be assigned to one's office and find his own office and that's the best train on the truck and they'll take the Well, we had well, talked about they needed to be they needed to have the logo on the side, so they would be going out doing an inspection or going out and doing like whatever they do in the planning department didn't happen. Yeah. So you never got to the second request for the public work. So the second request from the public works was the pickup truck. Fifteen. But but what's the budget in that? Thirty-five thousand dollars. However, that will be an increase because we're going to have a trade in revenue from the board, from the sheriff's department. And they've agreed to. to and they've agreed to, to just trade so that. The, the four trades will go to the new truck. Yes. To the new truck that will go to his. So really, so, so far, you're not turning them in. You're going to sell them because they they always got a better price and you just sold them instead of trading them. Well, that's what he said. A trade was. Yeah, he was saying trade. Yeah. You know, we could try to sell them independently. So that's how we got the better deal, and one of the reasons why Boy ended up with the truck that he did is when they we allowed them to sell it instead of using it as a trade in and, and gave them credit. Oh, just do a commission them. sale on it. Yeah, so they sold them and got a better price than what they were getting the credit for on the trade in. We can ask the dealership to do that and see if they'll do it. Oh, no, the dealer didn't do it. We just listed it. Oh, we just listed it. it. Oh, my understanding, but. I've never been over the fleet and don't want to be over the fleet. But it's my personal we'll figure something just list them because yeah. we'll figure really it. Exactly. But that John had us do that and then I think Daryl continued it when we did tell John. Well either way we figure even worst case scenario if we traded them, there's still plenty of funds there to cover the cost of the truck, so we're not having a path to the budget. So right now, because it's John's, the budget is changing 95,000 to 150. Yeah. <laughs> now, I, I don't know what Boyd's going to ask, but we may have to ask for additional difference. So if you get out of the truck, the first payment will be due in June 1st. Another reward. Now, the other thing to know about these plow trucks is there's a lead time to get these done. So the sooner we decide for sure well, that by work. January 15th, I'm going to start today. They got to go.
and, uh, and we asked him about that, you know, why are we so much lower. That, that covers their fuel and maintenance and all kinds of things. They have had maintenance costs go down quite a bit since we started doing the leases and not keeping the vehicles as long. Um, and they also, they weren't out and about as much this year but in part of the year with the COVID stuff. We didn't spend as much on fuel. Okay. Um, I don't know what that's going to end up at, for sure. They're all lower other than the public works. Mm -hmm. So the thing will come in within the budget. So. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll come in well within the budget. Okay. All right. And then, other than void, do you expect value to be um, no. Okay. Okay, so quick. So you have this the sheriff vehicle leases, and then the other hundred and ninety thousand. I thought all we had was just the sheriff's vehicle. We've got that hundred and ninety is what they pay all of the maintenance and fuel out of. And you also have an ambulance system. Yeah, we've got ambulance and that's a separate line. Okay, so you're saying 190 is for the fuel? Well, it's fuel, it's maintenance, it's oh, repairs, tired windshield. When they do, if they buy a vehicle, they put, you know, the lights and all that stuff in it. Oh, yeah. That's usually five yeah. grand by the time they put in lights and sell it. That's why we can't switch them. If you go back to public works, there's about 15,000 that we could go back and fleet. That's what he was asking. Yeah. You've only spent like that yeah. eleven hundred dollars dollars out of fuel for the year. I know they go more than that. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly what they do. We can't but it's being paid out of here. <coughs> yeah, so there is fifteen thousand that you can take out and probably more fuel. Mm -hmm. so I can see that we can Well shoot, that's our we only need five thousand more and we got our truck. I did most of it. We never talked about it. So do you want us to make that change? Yeah. I mean, I'm going to use what fuel I use. Instead of 15, though, we want to get like that. happened last year, too. I remember we were taking that out of weight and just doing that. Right. So that and I just came back and all of it. You just have to help with it. Where's the fuel? Well, 
I would think instead of if we're at it, that we wouldn't be increasing it, we would be leaving it what it was last year. And then that would take into account the additions. Wouldn't that we're just moving along. You're saying just reallocate it. Take twenty thousand out of the sheriffs and move it over. Those are my notes from last year. It was I think that was the time. A9 truck. Based on the Well, even if we go, we're at 95 now. I've, I've never seen us go. Something's got to be missing. Yeah, last year we spent 176. Yeah. So I, I would hesitate to make any adjustments to that right now. Right. I, I can't figure out how we're going to be able to have the whole convention and be three quarters of the way. I know we have spent the least patients. So the least payments come out of the other. Yeah. Well, you told me when I asked that you yeah. didn't buy some of the vehicles in your time. From your time. You're talking about the right? Uh, that's out of the lease fund, though. That's not out of the. That's you know, a whole other. We have two funds. That's just there. Yeah, but that's there. that's people and repairs. Yeah, and stuff. The lease is out of this one. Sure. <coughs>
310. That's about what we've spent historically the last 10 years is around 310,000. Well, it's up in 18 million dollars. All right, so we're going to Starting with the 250 now. Well, the ambulance isn't included. It's a separate line. Well, I guess I'm looking at the total. You look at the total. Oh, I wasn't looking at the total. I was just looking at the shares. I was just kidding. I was looking at the total. I was just 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 looking
the ambulance line as well. We're going back to
outside of a few of your neighbors, most of the rest of the family doesn't even care. Because they call her name. Call that one. Okay. What's going to be generally get called out? So I can't call on cats. I was going to say, I'll dispute it. I mean, I think that the animal control should be. They're going to argue, is it control or is it service? Or is it, what's the definition of the word? It says animal control and service. So it's all oh, well, then you need to define it. <laughs> because again, we're going, to get into, we're going to get into an argument. Is, is, is it, should it be, you call because there's a dog? Should you call because there's a cat? Should you call because there's cows in the road? Should you be called because, I don't know, can we hear Yeah. Do we have a on it and kill it? I have a shovel out for trying to go out for my chickens. I have a kids in the class and they go out. <laughs> we get them in our storage shed all the time in the school. They go out, take care of it, take home, skin it. What, what does the contract say? What kind of services are we supposed to be providing? Does the contract define what your services are? I thought because when, once before when this came up, and I don't remember what she was, we, one of the problems we were having is large animals. If we have a cow out in the road, if we have a horse out in the road, this was one of the justifications they used for it. So I think larger animals were supposed to be part of this. So, so this, is like draft, this is drafted a lot like the sheriff's agreement. Because it says it provides personnel and equipment in order to provide within the city's corporate limits one animal control officer providing direct animal control services within the boundaries of the city. So it doesn't define it. It does not define them. In fact, it's the only thing it specifically states besides covering what they will not be issuing subject to is, is the fact that we will do dog licenses. <coughs> now, who gets the money for it? But it says outside of city limits. Even though Morgan City will do it within city limits. The dog licenses. Uh, no, that changed. Uh -oh. this, this is, the city's not selling dog licenses. They changed the word on all of them. County does 100% of the licenses now. Okay, so how much are you trying to gain out of this deal? Do we still pay them some of the licenses? Oh, we did? I'm pretty sure we did. We did. I'm pretty sure we do. Yeah. He's claiming that, from my understanding, is he's supposed to keep track of what for what licenses are for the city and at the end of the year or whatever he just wants to tell this person. According to this, he's I got to be wrong. maintain a record of how many licenses are issued, how many calls are handled, and the number of violations, and made available to the mayor for review. Right, so, how much are you trying to gain? Well, so they're paying us. They're paying us nine three. We're paying thirty three thousand plus bins, both benefits. Yeah, that's 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 we're spending. Well, that doesn't count fleet. That doesn't count fleet. That's just for personal. And the vet. It's a pretty good chunk of money for the 93. I want to say it was like 70,000. And all the face stuff? I feel like it's Yeah, our budget's $71,000. Let's give it to Oregon Animal Control. And that doesn't include his meat. Seventy-one thousand, eight to seventy-one thousand. We talked to them one time. We said we want you to pay half of this. It was thirty-five thousand, and they said we can probably do it for that part-time guy. We said okay. And I don't have a problem doing that because then we can go part-time, and we don't have to pay full-time benefits anymore. Right. Some neighborhoods. And if they want to use the same guy, I can care less. He can work for both. Yeah. So what? In the, I'd be curious to know if they're tracking that. Who the way is tracking how many calls and what they're doing within the city and not in the That says that they well, may have to communicate in a report for Mountain Green Incorporation mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we'll pull all that information so somebody will know. Oh, he doesn't know about that. Oh, so we're going to start an only animal. Only animal. Oh, okay. yeah, I don't know about, I don't know if they can do it. I think our sheriff's contract for sheriff's services is a little closer to what it should be. It's animal control that I think is too well in emergency services. Animal control is about that. So maybe we can, well, I know we get the calls for that. Dispatch, because we've done it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We can create the report that we have already. But yeah. So is he part-time still? 
I'm mad I can't bury my parents there. What does, what does that cost us? I didn't get yeah, letter I, I asked if anyone wanted to bury their parents. I didn't know I could have. Now I can't. But I do have a sheet of these of how often Can you renegotiate the contract? I, I don't yeah. see that it's a, we have a contract for that. We don't you watch, just read something. I need to stay out of it, but I'm going to tell you, I think it's way better that we have that than when we used to have that massive warehouse that they shove everything in and leave it for a day or two and shoot it at the end of the day. I mean, well, I, I, I know agree. maybe we're not perfect, but what are you going to do if you don't have him? Uh, I agree, but we're not. it's not part of our contract with Watt. This is just some bill we end up with. Okay. And have we, should we have a contract? with them that somewhere says, we agree to this, and by the way, the city's going to pay a portion of it, then I guess some of those plans are city. Yes. Sure. Mm -hmm. no, they probably do, Charlie. Yeah, I Facebook's going to tell me. I think, 
think it's a management issue. I think that if, if, if we're not managing that animal control contract, we're not managing or should the county be paying for Randy to put dog down and put it in the freezer? Or should Randy be paying for that? How are we tracking that Randy's not paying for that and our taxpayers are paying for that? Oh, so if that's so I'm if that's the the thing we want to go down, then we have to go back to the firm of government because there are so many things that are the executive level management deciding on contracts with every contract with the city, not and the contract with law and all of. But that's the, that's the problem with a, with a part time council not involved in the daily operations of the county, but still the county executive. This is oversight of it. Needs to happen. I think it's how something that it? gets lost in the translation because when, Sid was, when Bruce was here, when Chad was here, and it transgressed to Sid and then it transgressed to me, we went with the sheriff and negotiated the contracts and, had, and sat in the room and had the discussions and brought the contracts back to the council for ratification and just for, for discussion and ratification before they were signed and put into the but it's the thing, and I think as, the, as you've had transitions, but that's not that's not continued on. But I do think the sheriff has continued on with those negotiations for the for the animal control and the law enforcement. I just don't know since I haven't been here. I don't know, but that's looking from the outside back in. Correct. The sheriff did both of those negotiations. I think part of it is we took the parking list down, mm -hmm. which predated me, which kept. Uh, going list of things that still needed to be worked on and finished and taken off. And at one point we had that going with Tana as the secretary, keeping us on top of all of the things that we needed to do. And that was probably one of them on there is, do we need to go over? Do we delegate it back to somebody else? But the oversight of all of the projects that still and the contracts and all of the things that are still outstanding to keep us on task it is the point, whether it's a parking list or, or a list of the secretary, there are things that fall through the grass and this is one. Is that fair? So, and so I'll own the higher ticket Is that how much they charge lots? Or no, no lots charging? The bill comes straight to us. Oh, lots charging? I just didn't know if lots were charging people that bring their pets in to be euthanized a certain price to recover some of them. We can pull that directly. It has nothing to do with lots. But, but really, if it's 250 bucks and it is a countywide service and it's 250 bucks a month, is it really worth it? That's probably a county service we should be providing, whether it's in the contract or not. Am I out on the limit? we got to pay for disposal of them if we're going to take them off, right? Exactly. Well, but if you're not supposed to bury them in your yard, they've got to go somewhere. Makes sense that we have some place that they would go. That doesn't seem like a reason. But for three thousand dollars a year, is this a county service that we should be providing? Well, yeah, there's a lot of services we provide. We don't have to do that. Exactly. Yes or no? I don't think this is silly. I'm not worried about three thousand dollars. Not silly overall. You know what I mean? <laughs> but it's three thousand dollars when we're going to be a million dollars short the budget at the end of the day, and we're going to go back and allocate. That's a noise. Exactly. Yeah. So I have to So, add it to the, the next person to negotiate the contract, and you can add it to a list of things to do for the new commission. It'll be awesome. And we, we add it to the contract that's existing, but we've got to dispose of them somewhere or contract with somebody else. But for $3,000, that's good. Yeah. That's me. It's $8.25. So we talked about this agreement, the Animal Control Services Agreement on the city. There's the one the interlocal agreement on additional law enforcement services. So Sarah's going to get us the call 
volume of statistics for that and yeah. control. We can discuss that further. Yeah. Um, we can discuss law enforcement. I don't know that we're that far off on that. We give them a dedicated city car and they pay us that extra money. I, law enforcement, I don't really have any issues with that. Going back. That's something else so my question to you is, looking at the amount, are we going to be comfortable if Mountain Green incorporates that that's the amount of the, of the for, for a charge service, for a similar service? Because they've got a school with a dedicated officer at the time. Well, that's a separate thing. Oh, okay. It's a real school. Because that's, that's, that's a, yes, the school, well, the school well, district pays $20,000. Well, I'm reading that. I read it. Yeah. That, the, the city refuses to allow them to use the SRO at the school as their duty card for the city. They have to have a separate card in the city. Oh, that doesn't, I have no idea who I thought I could have sworn I read it, though. It has to be part of what they're saying. The, the SRO. Because I brought that up with the city. Say, why can't the SRO answer your policies He's in town anyway. And they said, no, he's busy at the schools. We want somebody out on the roads. You, know, okay. you can't tell me that these kids are back here. Yeah. Honestly, what do they do at the school all day? Those kids aren't that bad. We were there. We were out. You know, I'm, in my, I'm in my office doing my job. You'll have to ask him what he does during the day. I don't know. And I don't. Especially with COVID, I don't even go in the main building anymore. I stay out in my shop and I'm a happy character. And nobody's there, so I can take my I mean, I'm fine if the school district is paying for them to be there all day and paying for the cost of their salaries. I can't imagine that they're busy there. These are not your shoes, as far as I know. Well, they put dinosaurs in the I know, but all the so we have a roster of 15 on the sheriff's So just the budget for the sheriff's department without the fleet, that's roughly $98,500 per office. So if the city's requiring their own additional offices, 40 hours a week, and we're, we're going to so it's the hundred thousand yeah. plus thirty two extra. Okay. I don't well, know how you're covering wages and benefits for one person plus uniform and collar. Well that's it's ninety eight thousand that, that, figured out. That was just the that was just the payroll cost, right? Ninety eight thousand I was like we were at hundred and ten uh, how much how long can you spend in? We're at 110 for officer without averaging in the car. Well, we're building yeah, we're the city 132. Well, so and we have not updated this since we've done these last few pay raises down there either. Or yeah, yeah, so I mean, this amount can change, but it's not. It's not that far off. It's not that far off. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. that's that's yeah. the point. Does the I was school district pay that? This one doesn't bring me a lot of angst. School district pay that. And ambulance. And then there's the one for fire protection services. I would, I read this one and thought, wow, I really see. Maybe we shouldn't have it, but not even fire services. Which is actually lowering all of our common sense costs. But that's a sweet deal, guys. Mm -hmm. Wait, can you get your new sewer bill? <laughs> They just want to do some of the their new budgets in the book pay rate. It's going what? They're, for their meetings, that they now get $125, they're going to get more per meeting. For the student district? Well, it was $25. You better go get on that board. That's so it's 18000 per year? She was on that board yes. for a long time. I don't Which know. Is okay. would be interesting for you. No, I mean, so, but on the other hand, it's the same. <laughs> Is that for an additional service? Or just it's an enhanced service. That's an enhanced service. They're basically recognizing that the fire department is located in the city and they're throwing $18,000 at us to. And they like to bring them but they still don't sell in the town. Which they're willing to give us once we have a contract. Okay. So was there any proposal on trying to change that contract? Or? Yes. We, I mean, Mike and I have met him a few times about renegotiating these numbers. We've given them some numbers, and they really haven't responded.
they didn't, they didn't like the EMS part. They were, they were more okay with the fire than they were. Because we went to them and said, you know, our EMS costs went way up last year. Between paying our EMTs more, we purchased an ambulance. So we went to them with a very high number of EMS services to make Here's kind of the, shut down what we have. Because I'll argue that Mountain Green doesn't have that, so it's a county-wide service, so it should be part of your taxes. Yes. And, and I can understand why they say that. Our argument was, by virtue of the location of the station, you were getting an ambulance service. Their argument was, well, you charge for ambulance services, and if your ambulance can run more calls, which it would in a high population area, you're bringing in more revenue anyway. So our city is a revenue maker for your ambulance. They're good. <laughs> they're not an answer for and, and they're not wrong. I mean, they're not totally wrong there. I, I see that logic. It's just, so that that's kind of where we went. The last meeting we had, we said, OK, let's not try to look at all of these together. Let's look at one of them at a time. Let's look at the sheriff's department. And we left the ball in their court because we said, yes. you go through this agreement for the sheriff's deputy. You tell us what you want as an enhanced service, and we'll tell you what it's going to cost. Right now, this is what you're getting. You tell us if you want any changes to this. If so, great. If no, that's fine. And we'll tell you what the new cost is. And how long ago did you make that with them? Or that's been a while. They're better off to just... Pre-COVID, for sure. And yeah. they're not going to bring it back. I had to be back in like chance. They shut down and just barely came yeah. back to work. Just like last month or this month, September. There hasn't been anybody at the city mm -hmm. offices all year. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so, I mean, no doubt. we can go back and read, you know, Pushing on it. Right, yeah, I mean, right. I mean if, if we think that there's additional amounts that they have to be paying, then that's what they're paying. Well, that's what I want to discuss it is what do you think? I think animal control needs to go up. It sounds like you need to wait for all of them. It either needs to go up or it needs to go up. I don't like this to use those numbers and I'll contact this now and bring up those numbers, but it gives us something to discuss. The basis, what does he propose as the alternative? He has basically said, Tell us what you're going to charge us for the service. We don't care about calling numbers all that crap. We'll decide if so we're going to pay it. We should look at the numbers and decide what the percentage is and then say, okay, this is the number. Yeah. And that's that's what we'll take back to. And we're not going to say. And we're going to have to be comfortable with that number knowing that they may say, never mind, we don't want it. And if that's if that's the case, so be it. We just have to be prepared to. But I do, but I do believe that I understand that. If they then, if that's a municipal service, I have to go back and look at the code to see the animal control. Animal control. If that's a municipal service and we don't provide it to the city, then there's supposed to be an adjustment to the with respect to the court. And frankly, I think that's probably appropriate in that agreement with respect to the fires. Because I didn't, I, I pulled the district creation documents for that, and I don't see that as an Service. That district is the fire book service for that area. Of that area. Mm -hmm. Well, the county was providing fire, and they still do. Um, in the in the local, local, in the local, local. And vice versa. Correct. So, and, and that's just, I mean, I didn't know that that's how they wrote it. I couldn't answer that. But I think in the discussions for doing it, it was because they wanted that enhanced service, and it was after the bird cars for the no, well, it's, it was in, it was for that. Like, so long it's before. Before. Yeah, it's, it's pretty yeah, old. It's, pretty old. Yeah. it's been there the whole time I've been there. It's been there since 90, I, I moved there in 91 and we've been paying the fire. I, I was thinking it was either in the late 70s or yes. so when they had that yeah, so the new fire really, station. So when they had that fire station, station up in Mark the islands, that was, was well, I didn't know that. I thought it was when they built the new fire no. station. Disregard everything I said, I don't know if they so and, and like I said, I didn't I only looked at this because they were asking that incorporation question and I was trying to figure out what is it we're supposed to charge for these. And, and like I said, the code is just a disaster from my perspective in terms of clearly articulating what's supposed to happen upon the incorporation and or what services the county is supposed to provide and not provide. But if there is the provisions that indicate if you're providing municipal type services to your county but not within the incorporated areas, they're supposed to be adjusted. And you're not 
And was there a part of the code that talked about if that special service district was created prior to X date, there's a code related to that, and if it was created after X date, there's a whole section. I don't remember seeing that specifically. That happens quite often mm -hmm. in the state. Um, and I think that, that that creates some of the confusion, especially in, in relation to the Mountain Fire District, because they were created so long ago, back in the 70s, the 80s, the 80s. They don't even allow you, uh, they, they've been coming away from that, creating all kinds of districts with the taxing authority. Yeah, one of the things that, in talking, when Gary Herbert came up when they were doing their 27, 29 county tour, we talked about that. And one of the philosophies that they had was that if an area wanted to rezone to smaller than five acre lots, they ought to be looking at incorporations of other rezone below that. And that was very difficult. Well, I would jump on that kind of and, and then, but if that's the case, you have to make incorporation. Easier. A lot easier. Exactly. Yeah, that's back on there too, because they're the ones that said, yeah, that, I, I, I agree. That's the discussion right. we had at USAC in the land use. And I, if you're going to do that, you've got to have a step along the way so that you're not just, if you want an area to incorporate. So if I look at this, not as a, a, a citizen of Mountain Green, but as a county executive trying to figure out how to balance these budgets, you want to make an area like Mountain Green have a process to incorporate. And that part of that is in the Municipal Services Code, so that when they're ready to take on their own planning and zoning and their own services, it's not such a shock to the system because there are you'd just be switching the Municipal Services over to their incorporated area. And you give them a process to incorporate and stand on their own. I think what happened is been quite a while now, probably 15 years or so. Remember, they made it really easy to incorporate, and it lasted until Rooney's Inn incorporated in yeah. one other place. But one or two landowners incorporated the whole area. Powder Mountain, Mill Ground. Powder Mountain, Mill Ground. Ground rewrote the legislation, and Powder Mountain did its thing, and then everybody, there was a pushback because nobody thought that was the right. And so right. then they tightened it up and made it what it is now, and I think they went too far the other way. Well, right yes, now, you can't do... Well, right now, you, even if you incorporate, it's two years before you can take on your own plan and zoning. That's the process. Of it. So what do you do for that two years? Not issue any building permits, not do any land use decisions, because you're an incorporated entity, but you don't have a planning department up and running it. That's statistically what the amount of time it's taking. So right now, why would you incorporate? You'd be behind for two years before you ever get up and running. My, my point is just if, the, if Morgan City says we can't, we'll take over our own animal control, then we will be a county providing municipal services outside of their city. Then we should stop that. We could stop that as a municipal service altogether. Or we just make a slight adjustment and then it wouldn't be very big for any of the services. Probably I'm going to control lots of work so we put it in the middle of two years. You know, that would be probably from the bottom of the road, so that's the last time I ever got it. But I was new and didn't want it to offend anybody, so I thought the neighbor's dog would be a close neighbor's dog. After that, we just got that off. I see a dog that just pull up and call him Max. It's not worse. <laughs> the dog's running around. You know, well, you know very much. Yeah, some people come up and buy land and bring all their dogs up and turn them loose and then they were chasing things like that. Mm -hmm. Or I caught them was in my cat thing. Well, the, the problem is you have cats. people that, that bring their animals up and down the wall and drop them off in the neighborhood. And mm -hmm. if you don't have somebody to deal with that, mm -hmm. it's not fair to the residents. There should be a service mm -hmm. that helps with that. Mm -hmm. I really believe that there is people, are people that use the animals to go through. And they do have the ability to deal with that. Right. Yeah, I mean, at this point, it's a good idea. We're done. 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 We're done.